Our keynote speaker is a leader in our community that is well known for inspiring, motivating, and connecting. He is a champion of service and bright futures for all. Grand Rapids Community College President, Dr. Bill Pink. It is a privilege to have him here today. Dr. Pink invests his time and spirit in great beginnings in all forms. Dr. Pink sees great beginnings as new classrooms being constructed, new career paths forged, and new leaders built. He's even working alongside the YMCA to create a new beginning for tomorrow's child care leaders by celebrating the value of the child care profession that sets great beginnings in motion for our tiniest members in our community. Please join me in welcoming the one and only Dr. Pink. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so any of you who have, uh, and I'm using this, that's good. Any of you who have heard me speak before know that um, that greeting means a lot to me when I say good morning, good evening, good night, whatever it is, just because I need to make sure, first of all, you are awake, and that's a good thing, but also that there's uh, some level of energy and celebration in the room, because I am a believer that when we get together and when we have this type of gathering that looks at and talks about, celebrates and recognizes organizations like the YMCA, it is cause for excitement, it is cause for celebration. So I will say it again, good morning. I'm not gonna ask you to get up and start clapping or anything like that, but I, and, or do any calisthenics this morning, and uh, pray for this young lady because I talk real fast I know if I don't know what I'm going to say, she certainly doesn't know what I'm going to say. So keep her in your prayers this morning. It's an honor to be a part of you this morning, to be um, a part of this celebration, a part of this uh, breakfast. Um, GRCC, um, the institution that I am honored to serve, is the oldest community college in the state of Michigan. It is one of the oldest in the country. <laughs> And it has been in this community for over 100 years doing the work that this community, when it comes to great beginnings, I will say new beginnings, uh, restarts, we are all about that. Because it's been doing that work for over 100 years in West Michigan. Some of you know it as JC, some of you know it as CC. Uh, people who come to me and talk about uh, the fact that they are a graduate of JC and they sometimes will apologize like, oh, it, I'm a graduate of JC and not CC. I always tell them, look, there are more JC graduates than there are CC graduates, so no worries there. Because it's the long game of what uh, this uh, college has been doing in this community. So we're honored to be a part of this uh, occasion, this celebration. A uh, big uh, thank you and a big uh, shout out to two people who I think are awesome people in this community as well uh, of the work that they do. In addition to uh, the folks who've stood before you already, I just want to recognize Scott Lewis and uh, Lacey Dixon for the great work that you do for the YMCA. Thank you for that. Because organizations like the United Way, or, or, like the United Way, the YMCA, GRCC, all of these organizations are very needed right now. I mean, with the, what the Y does, one thing that I would just say to you, and you'll hear me say a few times in the next 40, 50 minutes, I'm joking. <laughs> but you'll hear me say is that we need the YMCA in this community. We need it. I don't know if you've noticed or not, because the, the fact that there are so many different things happening in our society right now that really have shifted so many things of what we have always considered were values to us. The things that we ought to be living for, the things that we, um, that we commit to, the things that the veterans in the room and the veterans across this country defended our country for. Just good values. Things that mean a lot as far as civility is concerned. But also just in how we think about the world. So let me give you an example. I don't know if you saw this the other night. So I'm watching the show Shark Tank. I don't know if you watched that one or not. I kind of enjoy it. The last one that I saw, one of the uh, individuals that came before the sharks, 
to seek funding. They were asking for maybe over $100,000, $150,000 for their company. This young man was a, uh, had been a college student and was going after a degree, and here's the story he gave them, and this was a very uh, recent uh, episode just last week. Here's the story he gave them. He said, I was in college. He said, I was actually at a very prestigious university, and I was doing really well. Got up one morning, and it's during the pandemic, so he said, the class that I was in was going to be a Zoom class, and I just really didn't want to get up. Didn't really want to be a part of the class. So I started figuring out, how can I go about still getting check marked that you were in class without actually being there? So his product was this. He has created a product that if you are on a Zoom, Google Meets, Microsoft Teams, whatever it is, it is a product that it will create a video loop of you. And so what you have to do before class is that you have to go onto your computer, turn your, turn your uh, camera on, and just kind of do a video of about five, about three to five minutes of you sitting, nodding every once in a while and everything. And so then once class starts, you have your video start. And as the instructor is sitting there looking at the screen of everyone in class on the Zoom, there's your little square and you're sitting there doing this. but you ain't there. You're either still in bed or you're out doing something else. That was his product. His product was how to get around the system. His product was how to cheat the system so that, you know, I just don't want to really be there and I know that professor is going to record the, the uh, lecture, so I'll just pick up the lecture later on and I'll be fine in class, but I certainly can fool him or her into thinking I'm there when I'm really not there. Now, I was really interested to see what the sharks would do with this one. Every one of them were pretty amazed. They just laughed and they were just asking, how would you come up with this? What, what gets into your mind to come up with this kind of thing? And at the end, here's what all of them said. There's no way I'd fund this. They said, because what you're doing there is not the honest way to get, as a matter of fact, Mark Cuban, he said, let me give you advice, sir. Get back in school. Get back in school, get your degree done, and then apply it to something that is truly going to move the world. I was pretty relieved to hear that. But what it also pointed to me is that this idea of great beginnings, sometimes I call it new beginnings, our students start, restart, and start again. This idea is so important today, and organizations like the Y are just that important because it's organizations like this that point to people and say, there is something to the values that we as individuals, as human beings, ought to be exemplifying for ourselves and for each other. It's not what this gentleman was talking about as far as how you short circuit the system, how do you get around, that's not what it was about. And hopefully that's not what we are about. Because friends, that's why in organizations like this are so vital to us right now. Because there's so many things that tend to and are continuing to try to shift and move us down pathways that I believe just aren't the right way to go. What was mentioned earlier, and Miranda mentioned it so well, and the video talked about it, this idea of child care, early care, early childhood, that's one of the things that from GRCC's perspective and the partnership that we have with the Y and that we continue to have with the Y and the, the conversations that Scott and I continue to sit down and say, how can we get at it stronger and how we help those who are our most vulnerable, our children? How can we give those children the best beginning that they could possibly have because everybody deserves a really good beginning? Everybody deserves that. So how is it that the, that the why, how is it that GRCC and other organizations can ensure that early care and early childhood are, have a light shown upon them that is vital and paramount to our community? Because it, as a good friend of mine who's in the room, Sean Welsh, said yesterday as I was listening to him speak, it is indeed the long game. 
early childhood is indeed, that's the long game. Because the short game is what we do with adults and what we do with our, uh, our teenagers and everything. That's the short game. We can get them now. We can get them going now. We can get them from an education perspective. We can give them the best education they could possibly have to send them on to the university, to send them to a job. That's what we do at the community college. And I think we do it well. But the, the long game of this thing says, what are we doing for the development of those three and four year olds and, old, and a little older to help them have the great beginning that they deserve? Because friends, the data shows us that the better the early care of children, the better chance they have once they get older. Education wise, society wise, emotionally, the data says it. And so how do we make sure that organizations like the YMCA that continue to dig at good quality early care and child care, how do we make sure that these organizations continue to go down the road of the kind of help that they provide for little ones? Because it is vital to the future of this community. And if we get so wrapped up, friends, in what the present is, I, I, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of, we have all the things that right here in front of our face that we are all so concerned about. As an institution, a higher ed institution, I mean, this has been a day, these last 18, 20 months have just been a daily, daily grind in a way that we've never had to grind at it before. And so it's so easy for us to look at the eight, 16, 18, 20, 30, and 40 year old and say, what are we doing for them? But friends, that true long game that will affect the 18 year old today is what we did 10, 12 years ago. So if we can help in terms of the little ones, the most vulnerable of our population, if we can do something now, that will make such a big difference for our futures, for the future of this community. It is not only, in my mind, an, an issue of equity, it is also an issue of economic viability for our community. And it matters that much. And that is what service is all about. How we serve the, the most vulnerable of our population. Service is, that's one of those big words. That is a huge word when you really digest and dissect that one. Service. There's a quote that has been said by several people. If you look it up, you'll see uh, Shirley Chisholm, you'll see Muhammad Ali, you'll see others who talked about service in a way that said, and you'll be familiar with this maybe. They said, service is our rent we pay to live on this earth. That's the rent we pay. Now, that, that's not just service as far as just something of, I brought you a cup of coffee over, I didn't know. That's le a level of service that goes beyond. That's a level of service that actually looks very and is very sacrificial. That I give of my means, I give of my human resource, I give of my financial resource. That is service. And as those people mentioned, it is truly one of the ways that you and I pay rent to have space on this earth, to be alive on this earth, part of that rent that we pay ought to be how we pay it forward to people. Service. I'll leave you with this. Some of you may have heard me talk about this before, but I think it's relevant as I end my conversation with you this morning. I like to talk about one of the most classic movies of our time, one of my favorite movies, it's a classic that is seen often during the holidays, outside the holidays, you see it all the time, very classic. Of course, I'm talking about Medea's family reunion. <laughs> In that movie, there's a scene toward the end of the movie. And if you've seen it, you'll remember this scene. So in this particular scene, it is a family reunion. And so what they've done is that the whole family, and there are just tons of family members that have gathered on the old property of, that, was, that went back a couple of generations in the family. And it's a nice, it's a large uh, piece of property, a lot of land where they're uh, out playing a football game and they're doing various things. Um, and there's an old house that sits on this property. At this, at, and they're all, the family is at the family reunion. And so in this particular scene, what I just called three of the matriarchs of the family, 
We're talking the great-grandmother, the grandmother, and they are walking the property. They're just walking. And the grandmother barely able to walk, the great-grandmother, barely able to walk. She is at an age where she has seen so many things. And as she is walking and they are helping her along, she's looking at different family members. And she's looking over here and she's seeing some family members over here that are uh, fighting each other, kind of getting at each other because they're uh, just uh, having, you know, doing a little uh, gambling game and they're kind of pushing, shoving each other. And she looks over here and she sees, oh my goodness, these uh, family members over here, a couple of young ladies who's... Uh, for her, the shorts are up to here, and she's just, oh, my goodness. And everything, every time she's, as she's walking, she's seeing all these things of just pictures of the family that she's just going, oh, my goodness. And she's seeing guys who are uh, disrespecting each other and people who are just uh, not acting. These are her family members. And she gets to the house, and they help her on the porch. She says, I, I, I want to sit down. She sits on the porch, and she says, I need to talk to my family. And so they gathered everyone from the whole, the whole house, the whole area. They get all the family members, and this is probably 100, 150 people, gathered all of them around the porch. And the matriarch of the family says one thing. She looks at them, and she says, is this what we paid for? Is this what we paid for? Friends, when I think about where we are today as a country, as a society, I think about my father, my mother, who have long passed. I think about my grandmother, who has long passed from this earth. But I also think about people who have done incredible things for this country for generations, who have passed long ago, who gave in so many different ways of their life, and their legacy speaks so strongly for who we are today as a country. I think those people would probably say the same thing when they see just where we are right now as a, as a civil state as that idea of civility. I think if my dad, and I've said this before, I think if my dad walked in that door, my dad grew up, he's a World War II veteran. He grew up in a time where uh, he was one who had to go to certain bathrooms, couldn't drink from this water fountain, couldn't do this and that. I think if he walked in that door, I think he would want to say to me, Bill, I can't believe that you're still dealing with the stuff that we dealt with. I can't believe you're still dealing with that. Is that what I paid for? Friends, it's incumbent upon us. When we talk about great beginnings, we talk about what we need to do together. Friends, start where we all sit in agreement because then the conversation about what we disagree with will go so much easier. But instead of always starting with, with what we disagree with and always starting with the gripe that we have and that civil conversation struggles to even get out, make sure that we are people that start with where we can all resonate and all agree and find community and find relationship. Because in relationship is where we then can deal much better with the topics we don't agree with. But if we never decide and never develop a relationship, that conversation goes so bad. And I've seen it too long right now. The way we give our children a great beginning is by showing them the example of what can be. And that's where we need to be. Thank you so much. God bless you all.